Hello and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel. Today we'll be talking with the Reynolds School District in East Multnomah County. We'll be joined by the superintendent, Dr. Dana Diaz, and we have also with her Dr. Nicole McTavish, the chief academic officer, Rachel Hopper, the chief operations officer, and Dr. Christopher Ortiz, the executive director of student and family services. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. I'm, and I don't think we've had this many people on our show yet, so this will be <laughs> fun. <laughs> so the Reynolds schools have been closed since mid-March, and that's, of course, due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But that's been a huge shift for everyone, and that it's not just the students and the parents, but all the teachers, the faculty, the administration. Tell me if you could, each of you, um, in a nutshell, what your particular job entails and then what you're having to do differently to accommodate this and to, to still be able to serve your students. Um, Dr. McTavish, can I start with you? Sure. Um, I think, so my area is over all of the academics. So the career technical programs, the core content areas like English and language arts and social studies, um, pretty much everything that we deliver content-wise to students. And I think the biggest thing is for teachers, a huge part of what they do every day is the relationship that they have with their students. So that, that care and connection that happens between kids and their teachers is a really big part of, of academic success. So for us, it's been trying to translate that warmth and um, relationship from the brick and mortar classroom to the online environment. So we can put platforms and content and stories and mathematics in front of kids, but it's really that human connection that makes it all work. So that's been the really, um, I think the real key of all of this is letting the teachers shine through with the art of teaching, even though we're in a very different context. I think that would be really difficult because, you know, they, they, can't, they can't hug them, they can't yeah. look them in the eye, they can't tell them what a great job, job they're doing face to face. So I think that would be really hard for both students and, and the teachers. I've heard the teachers have a hard time, you know, dealing with that kind of thing. It is, and just organizing your time as well. Um, you know, the, the ebb and flow of the school day is very different when you're trying to individually work with um, small groups of students or individual students or often with the younger grades with their families too, so that we could all um, understand what we're asking of families and kids and we can help each other to get it done. So, it, you know, everybody's trying to find their cadence right now. And, I think the scheduling would be a, a nightmare. But yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's what they're doing. They're going in small groups then. Is that right? That they're, um, they're trying? Yeah, different teachers are really approaching it different ways that um, the younger grade teachers um, really have a different approach to their kids than the secondary teachers who often have um, the ability for kids. Many of the secondary kids were very used to using online devices, computers, laptops, um, where we're actually doing a lot of instruction about how to do that at the elementary grades. I, I heard that you've been giving out uh, devices for uh, the students to use. So yeah, that's a huge switch for everyone. Uh, how, how about you, uh, Ms. Hopper? Can you tell me a little bit about what you do and uh, how that's changed? Sure, thank you. Um, my role with the district is, uh, just as Nicole mentioned, uh, everything academic. Uh, my role is to serve the, those that serve our students. And so um, I'm over transportation, nutrition, technology, and facilities. Um, and each one has a very capable um, manager and, and a, a great um, deal of hardworking staff. Um, um, at this time, especially, they're being asked to um, answer the call and help and support our families. What's changed for us is um, distributing devices. As a district, we had just recently gone one-to-one -one devices for middle and high schools, which was extremely fortunate for us. Um, and so our rollout for technology really focused on the elementary families. Um, we've sent out 2,600 devices plus at this time. At this point, we're at the phase of delivering them to homes with our transportation teams for those who haven't made that connection yet. Um, and then being able to support the back end with a, um, in a different way um, through our technology services and our instructional technology teams. Um, with nutrition, we've moved from um, meal sites at, at 15, 16 locations to uh, now 10 locations. And we're distributing, last week we distributed 27,000 meals um, to our students and families. Um, we combine breakfast and lunch together and it's a drive up social distance uh, appropriate 
set up um, at 10 different sites. And that brings in our nutrition teams as well as our transportation teams that are helping distribute, uh, prepare and distribute for us. Um, with regard to facilities, we have a custodial team who's um, working hard to keep our buildings um, sanitized and preparing spaces for folks to return each day if we're on site or um, as larger groups come back to the buildings. Um, there's, there's a very high level of anxiety and angst, which is understandable in a pandemic condition. And so our, our teams are working hard to make sure that um, we're able to show that the spaces are clean and communicate in a way that makes people feel safe um, when they have to re-enter our buildings. Um, and then transportation has just been amazing. You know, they've gone from um, 100 drivers to driving and picking up routes and delivering students to um, coming in and getting food handlers cards, supporting our nutrition team, making meals, uh, distributing them at works or at school sites. Um, now they're distributing materials that our families need that have barriers to transportation. So um, everyone's just doing such an amazing job and they really with, with as much notice as anybody else, um, sort of turning around and doing things in a different way to support our students and families. And so um, it definitely is a different environment um, and I'm just so impressed every day with the work that they do. I'm impressed just listening to you talk about it. I mean, that's, that's a huge change for your, your people that are working for rental school district. I mean, the transportation, the, the nutrition, and, and, and the IT, getting out that many devices, that's really impressive. You, you, I have to say, I think Reynolds has done a pretty phenomenal job, it sounds like. How about you, Dr. Ortiz? Why don't you tell me what you, you're doing? You're the um, Director of Student and Family Services, so I'm sure you've kept very busy as well. Yes, we've been very, very busy. The de um, Department of Special Education, English Language Development Department, um, our translation services and family liaisons um, are under my division. And so uh, at least on the translation services end and the family liaisons, um, have been really working to outreach to parents, especially working with families who may have difficulty accessing the amazing technology that <laughs> distributed. We have a lot of parents who, they don't use computers, they don't use a lot of devices, so we're trying to support them uh, to help their children get online. Uh, so that's been a major um, effort of my division, also to make sure that key documents are translated uh, in the languages that parents need them. Uh, again, to be able to be engaged with their students. Um, also, the school social workers and counselors are under my division, so they have been really working hard to, um, like Dr. McTavish said, to do that social-emotional uh, learning and contact and making uh, students and their families feel cared for. Uh, our school social workers have been really working hard to support um, our families who are homeless with accessing resources, food, um, shelter. And so that team is working hard. My special education team uh, is reached out to uh, all of our students and families who receive special education services and are now organizing to do all of the IEPs. We have about a thousand IEP meetings that need to be conducted between now and the end of school year. So they're really ramping up to get that done because we, we want to take care of the students now. So the special education teachers are really working hard on that end, but we still also have to prepare for um, coming back to school in fall and hopefully we'll be back to brick and mortar. Um, and so we'll need to have all of those pieces in place for the children's education when we get back. So I think my team has been doing an amazing job with supporting our families, especially with that social emotional um, outreach, um, you know, and supporting our teachers uh, alongside to make students again feel cared for and that they are part of Reynolds. It's, it's really, it's kind of, it's overwhelming thinking about how much it is that you have to be but that you have to do, and then to, to be able to support the kids in their nutritional needs and their social and emotional needs, not just the academics. It's just, it's, it's a huge job. So um, yeah, kudos to all of you. I, I feel like you all deserve huge raises. <laughs> um, Dr. Diaz, tell me, well, I know what you do. Tell, me, tell us what you do in your role and, and what's the, what are your biggest challenges in, uh, in dealing with all this? So the most important thing for me as superintendent of the schools, as you can see, I work with an amazing team. 
And so um, as a servant leader is to ensure they have the support and resources that they need in order to serve students and families and staff. That's the most important thing. So how do we synthesize everything that we're doing. So recently at our cabinet meeting, we actually synthesize what we're doing in phases. And so right now we're in phase two. Uh, and then we'll start creating our phase three um, action steps based on what we're finding out that needs to be improved for the future. Because one of the things we talked about in our team and we've talked about it with our teachers and with our principals is that we're all learning together on how to provide services uh, to our students and families in a different way. And so every single time that we meet, we talk about problem solving and we talk about solutions and how to best serve our students and our staff and our families. And the good thing is, is that we're all listening to the stakeholders to figure out how we're going to provide those services. So I think that's the most important thing. Another thing that I've been doing um, and I've been working with my team is leaning into our state education agency uh, because they've done a really good job in providing us with guidance, guidance on um, graduation, guidance on 9th through 11th grade students. They just sent guidance on K through 8. So making sure that we have our systems in place to ensure that we're following the guidance that the state has provided. They're, the most challenging thing for us right now is, as you know, um, COVID-19 is going to have a financial impact, uh, not only to the businesses and to the, and to the people that have lost their jobs, um, but also to the school districts. Um, and so now we've got to look at how that's going to impact us. So we're uh, having conversations of, about what Gonna, what are financial? What are the financial implications for the future for us as a district? So that's the number one uh, challenge that I have. And the second um, opportunity is to look at the future because school is open right now. The only thing is, is that we're doing school differently, and it's called distance learning. But now, what we have to do, as you know, the governor just gave out guidance on reopening the state. So businesses are going to start opening up and um, other, other areas in our state is gonna, are going to open up. We're already open. Uh, however, how do we go back to brick and mortar? Um, and how do we go back to brick and mortar in a way that's safe for students and for staff? And so those are the opportunities for us. Is our, for me as, as, as a superintendent is how do we look at the budget and how that's going to impact us today and in the future? And then also how we're going to come back to brick and mortar in a way to keep everybody safe. Um, and then what is, how are we going to still focus on student achievement and student learning, focusing on the future? Because that's the number one thing. That's why we do school. And so how do we ensure that student learning is still happening and how are we going to use data to support us and help us to make sure that, it, that it's happening? Um, and so that's, that's in a nutshell. Of course, as you can see, we're doing a lot of good work. We have a great team. We have great teachers and, and social workers and uh, great classified staff. Um, uh, our principals are working really hard. They're actually following social distancing when, when we go back to the schools to even pick up devices. Or, so we really have a great team at Reynolds, and I'm really proud to serve as their superintendent. I think you're all doing a fantastic job. I, um, I, I do hope that everything goes well and that we're able to go back to brick and mortar, but it is, it is a scary decision to make as to, you know, is it, is it too early? Is it, is it not? You know, so that's, it's, it's a tough situation. Uh, I appreciate that you think of them as opportunities, not just challenges. And that's great. And, and I think the challenge also is probably how to keep the kids engaged in this whole new way of, of learning uh, how to keep them, you know, motivated to, to do their best. And, and so you've all got your work cut out for you, but you're doing a fantastic job. So thank you all for being on here and sharing what you're doing at Reynolds School District. It's, it's pretty impressive. Thank you for having us. Yes, you're thank welcome, you. you bet. And thanks to everybody who's watching today. From all of us at Metro East Community Media, be safe, be healthy. Mm -hmm.